I'm channeling my best beauty <laughs> commercial voice right now. <laughs> That's it, Gloria. Just elasticity. In just four <laughs> weeks, elasticity has improved. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Chemist Confessions podcast. I'm Gloria. I'm Victoria, and this is a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about on the daily. Mm-hmm. And today, I have to say, uh, this wasn't planned. We were doing. We started with. Did we do ginseng last week? Mm, yes. Okay. Yes. So we did <laughs> a couple episodes on extracts, and we were planning some content around. We, we had a plan. We had a plan. We had a content plan. Yes. And it was going to be a month full of extracts and plants and exotic stuff. We do not stick to plants. <laughs> it fizzled out hard on me because it's just like, you know, going from evidence heavy stuff, interesting papers, things we can share with you guys, going to, well, here's the evidence. It's not very impressive, but like, here's like, it's hard to be peppy and yeah. hard to. Lukewarm so, takeaways. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Today, we decided to pivot, mm-hmm. a mild pivot, and we're going to talk about mandelic acid. Hey. Yep. Um, and yeah, let's just dive right into it. Exactly. All right. <clears throat> to start, what is mandelic acid? Almond stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So mandelic acid is considered an AHA. AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acid. This is just a term kind of describing where the acid group is um, for those of you orgo nerds. But mm. um as a category, it's often associated with chemical exfoliants. Mm. The cousins in this category are glycolic acid, which is often considered the strongest molecule because it's the smallest one. And then there's lactic acid, which is kind of the runner up in the AHA category. It's just a little bit bigger. It's still a great exfoliator, but it's actually also naturally found in your skin as a natural moisturizing factor. And uniquely has hydrating properties at the right percentage. Yeah, so where does that leave mandelic acid? Um, well, <laughs> mandelic acid is very unique. Uh, we'll put the structure up on the screen. It has, structurally speaking, visually, again, it doesn't, it almost doesn't look as closely related with a glycolic mm. and lactic. It actually looks quite similar to cell acid, which we'll also put up on the screen. And for this reason, it has a very different profile, mm-hmm. resume. <laughs> To, to us chemists, we have to work with them. Yeah, Glycolic and lactic acid are very water-soluble. You just kind of put that in, you're like, boy, no. And we can tell you when we were formulating the specialist, that is, that's not how Mandelic works. Mandelic didn't like us, nor did it like our methods. No, no. <laughs> so it is, it is mildly water-soluble. Mm-hmm. It is also mildly oil-soluble. It's kind of that in-betweener kind of thing, which gives it kind of a unique property compared to other AHAs. Totally. And because of that and how you might have heard us talk about sal acid in a similar way, and that's actually true. And so it's for that specific reason that probably is why um, in terms of the resume, it was actually looked at more for tackling oily skin woes. Um, So if you were to go down the mandelic acid rabbit hole, you will find that they are generally trying to look at three areas. So they're looking at acne. Mm -hmm. Um, They will be looking at hyperpigmentation. And I think with all AHAs, they just got to know, are there any anti-aging benefits? So I think that's what we're going to go through today. Yeah. So does Mandelic actually, you know, actually, Victoria and I often poo-poo on um, the fringe no, AHAs. No, I think it's not once in a while we'll get questions like, oh, what about Malik and Tartaric? We're like, ah, well, whatever. <laughs> Outside, not uh, as enthused. Yes. Well, basically. <laughs> different than poo-pooing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. I agree totally. We're very positive here. No poo pooing, just uh, just enthusiastic. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So as we move away from the big, uh, the classics like cell acid, glycolic acid, the amount of data gets a little bit more scarce. So with mandelic, where I realized that based on polling you guys about questions you have about mandelic, most of the questions are still on the thing uh, on the same thing of like. Wait, so how is it different than your mm. glycolic and d- does it work? <laughs> mm. Yeah. And it's fair. Just It just doesn't get the same spotlight. Mm. So, yeah. Great question that we will be answering in the next segment. But before we get into that, a quick break and a shout out. <laughs> Speaking of, what makes our specialist so special? The specialist is our oily, congestion-prone skin. <laughs> well, specialist. Um, it features 18% mandelic acid, 2% sal acid, and 5% niacinamide in a 
beautiful blue gel colored by gardenia flowers. It is very pretty. Yes, and I have very dry skin, but I actually do keep this in my arsenal very regularly because I get some gnarly blackheads if I'm not on top of my exfoliation game. So my favorite way to use the specialist is to use it as a leave-on spot treatment on my blackheads. And pro tip for everyone out there looking to just really tackle that very stubborn congestion, I usually use either alcohol to wipe down the area or clay mask before I use a specialist. This helps really dry out the skin and help the actives in the specialist function better. And just a quick tip in terms of oily skin, that spot treatment that Gloria does, I actually will bring it all the way up to my T-zone area and chin area. That's usually my main shininess. Like <laughs> the zone. shine zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you're curious about the specialist, um, please don't forget to use promo code CC Podcast 2024 for 15% off your first order. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of loaded questions about mandelic acid, and there's also a lot of studies to back these up. Um, so this episode will be mildly study dense, where we'll try to run through mm. a couple of them pretty quickly. Mm. So the number one question, and I think one of the product types you will see featuring mandelic acid mm. those are acne products. Mm -hmm. So there is one study looked at topically using a 5% mandelic versus a 10% mandelic. So this one isn't comparing it to anything else, um, any other BHA or AHA in the landscape, but it's just kind of like a, like a ballpark topical percentage you want to target here. Yep. And again, friendly reminder that cell acid is used as a leave-on treatment between 0.5% to 2%. So mandelic acid right off the bat, even though it looks very similar to um, cell acid, the use level is already much, much higher. Mm. So in the study, there's uh, 60 participants, 30 in each group, in the 5% group, and then 30 in the 10% group. They used it for 10 months and- Two months. They used it for- <laughs> 10, 10 months, <laughs> damn. That's a big budget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they used the product for two months. And based on the observations here, uh, the results goes, and I'll just like, quote the paper says physical examination performed during the study revealed a gradual improvement in the conditions of skin in both groups with a reduction in the number of postures inflammatory nodules and comedones degree of improvement interestingly between five and ten is very similar um what i think is really interesting and important to point out here is one both of these groups have 30 people mm -hmm. nine in each group has experienced mild irritation mm -hmm. um again i think this isn't to say mandelic is bad it's sensitizing just this this is at a this is the what do you expect at the five percent to ten percent level and i think with ahas that's always a little bit part of it for sure i actually did want to note there's a weird quirk about this paper mm -hmm. um the five percent and ten percent formulas are actually two different formulas yeah they mentioned weird. that the five percent one has a lemon peel extract mm -hmm. and the other one has some sort of weird almond powder of sorts um so these aren't actually like a true like one-to-one -one slowly looking at mandalic being the only difference and i was like oh that's a really strange quirk um and so that's i i feel like with the whole mild irritation experience i'm like I don't know, sometimes the way you formulate things combined and the actives that you put in, because it sounds like they were using like an actual final product, mm -hmm. final formula. Um, sometimes some of that can lend to the irritation that you experience with AJs, it can add to it. So I just thought it was like, wow, that's a really strange thing. Maybe there's, they just didn't have a chemist. You know, so they were like, man. That's such a good point, because that's one of the challenges we faced when we were working on our specialist, mm -hmm. because at 18%, we're limited in what we can use to make sure that stuff doesn't crystallize back on you guys. But at the same time, we have to be mindful of the balance of solvents we use. So exactly. you're not getting overexposed to penetration enhancers. There's no sensitivity. Other mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, that's a great point. And something else that's kind of interesting from this, this study is that while the improvement in acne specifically are not that different, mm. there are more people in the 10% group that have that self-reported, or this is just a consumer perception based of it, that they feel like they are producing less sebum. Yeah, for sure. And I think the other thing, the other takeaway is these 5%, 10% levels, you would consider this as more of that nightly serum treatment mm -hmm. ad. Um, I think just to kind of uh, we always talk about the AHA category, the product landscape, there's peels, there's serums, all of that. So we would be placing it in that category. Yep. Yes. So first study indicates that mandelic is, in fact, a helpful part of your acne routine. Does something. Does something for acne. Uh, and then we finally move into the comparison land. Mm. Now, okay, this is where <laughs> we have to do a mini jump. Mm. When it comes to, when you're doing AHA, BHA research, if you look up stuff for, for say, glycolic acid mm -hmm. or cell acid, mm -hmm. some of the more serious studies you have to extrapolate from a little bit because they're on peels. Yes. 
So this one is on a 45% mandelic acid peel compared to your 30% cell acid peel. Ain't nobody doing this weekly. Please don't do this at <laughs> home. Yes. We, time and time again, we have mentioned that if you really try, actually, you don't have to try that hard. You can find stuff of this concentration or at least claim to be at this concentration on Amazon. Don't try. <laughs> we wouldn't recommend, I think, estheticians are fanning themselves at home like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. You can really hurt yourself. And um, this is the type of peels are best you know, handled by a professional who can pay attention to your experience through the peeling journey and, you know, do whatever corrective actions that may or may not be needed. I think Gloria and I are always baffled by, um, and weirdly enough, this you see this a lot on TikTok recently, is people doing these like at home high strength peels. And like, weirdly enough, it is not criticized. Like you see the transformation where they scale and scab almost. And then, you know, they see the recovery and they're talking about how like my skin is tighter and it's, mm -hmm. like pigmentation is better, a more even tone. And weirdly enough, that does not get enough. Of, they just don't get any flack for doing things like that. It's weirdly something where it's like you want an at home transformation. This is what you should do. It's kind of wild. It is. I am not a fan of that at all. Like you shouldn't try to purposely hurt your skin. Yeah. Home. Yeah. To that degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to the study. I digress. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> um, but that is an important PSA. But the study did compare a 45% mandelic acid peel versus a 30% mm. cell acid peel. There is 50 people, uh, about 25 or so in each group. Mm. And they did this peel. This is actually a pretty aggressive schedule. Again, if you go into your office, they may or may not put you on a more spread out schedule, depending on your skin condition and what you're trying to work on. Well, this clinical study is like, time is money. Yeah, uh, we got a deadline. So you guys- <laughs> I only paid for 12 weeks of work here. <laughs> exactly. So they, uh, they did one peel for every two weeks mm. for six peels. So 12 weeks total. Um, and I will quote them here. They say both agents showed almost, almost equal efficacy mm. in proving mild to moderate Acne vulgaris? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes. <laughs> Brain farmer with maybe acne vulgaris. <laughs> Cell acid was found to be better in treating non-inflammatory lesions, while mandelic acid has an upper hand in treating inflammatory lesions, oh, which sorry. I find to be a little surprising, yes. to be honest. Yes. Um, and usually it's because, I mean, cell acid is the more, I guess, tried and true, mm -hmm. more research back acne topical mm -hmm. so i do find this surprising also because sal acid gets tied to a lot of anti-inflammatory claims too yes actually mm -hmm. yes um so do, 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 and they also mentioned that overall though there's no significant difference between the two groups and yeah in improving the overall acne score so which just means like across all different types of acne or congested skin stuff you might get yeah they're looking at comedone papules pustules and cysts yep I will put out some of the result charts here. There's a couple of different acne scoring systems that papers tend to work with. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that can make comparing across different papers a little difficult. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, they all have like a different numbering system. We'll put it up there, mm -hmm. up on the screen if you're curious. But the general direction of improvement is pretty on par. We'll put some of the result charts up here. What I find really interesting is the uh, comedone count over time. It does seem like the mandelic acid group, in terms of in terms of taking down the number of comedone you have, didn't do quite as well as cell acid. Mm -hmm. But where it kind mm -hmm. of did better is the mean papules count. So like generally, like something like a little bit more inflammatory, a little bit more angry. Mandelic seems to be a little bit better. But again, this is a relatively small study. I wouldn't say one's better for A, one's better for B, just yeah. based on this one study, but that they perform pretty similarly. I was actually going to say, like, you know, this is partially why we like pairing both of these yes. in our specialist. Um, there is room for both in the acne space. And as you know, we'll definitely share our guide um, on acne, but we kind of explain how acne kind of needs like a multi-prong approach mm -hmm. to tackle all of the different lesion types, um, all of the different culprits that are causing your acne breakout. So I, I think this, if anything, shows that there's... You, you can use both in a routine, even though I feel like sometimes they're like, only sell acid for acne. Yeah, so generally speaking, mandelic acid seems to be helpful for acne mm. for sure mm. now let's jump into hyperpigmentation Ooh. this one was a bit of a was really interesting for me mm -hmm. so backtracking a little bit glycolic acid is one that we'll often tout for hyperpigmentation but that's not even something we'll say is a one and done hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. i think when it comes to pigmentation exfoliation is important but it's one aspect of it um so mandelic because it's larger size it's kind of considered a weaker um, mm -hmm. AHA. So, but 
you see it get positioned as a hyperpigmentation active in a lot of products. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, and then I feel like a lot of people ask, like, well, so is it helpful for pigmentation? This is also kind of um, my, I would say, conspiracy theory mm -hmm. is because no one can say Mandela is for acne because mm -hmm. it's OTC. Mm -hmm. They do like acne adjacent claims. <laughs> and so like part of me just feels like, like, because for me, I actually, um, I feel like I wasn't as aware of Mandelic for hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. I always kind of assume they're like, eh, they're trying to just like capture the acne realm. They're trying to target like um, the PIH that acne patients get. Yeah. So anyways, that's just my thought there. But yeah, I totally agree that I, I found this paper really interesting. Yeah. So we did find a paper. This was a, a Pakistan study that was done a couple of years ago. And they split up 100 patients, which is really impressive. Mm -hmm. I actually wasn't expecting a study of this size mm -hmm. um, for mandelic acid. They did it for 24 weeks. Big size. A long time. So Big size. Awesome. <laughs> Big study. <laughs> um, what they did is they split into two groups. Yeah. Half of the patients got 4% hydroquinone, which is mm. the standard. Mm. And the other group got 4% hydroquinone with a 10% mandelic acid treatment. And this is pretty interesting because you can... So to me, this is like super interesting because you're expecting both hydroquinone groups to do really well. Yes. And but it can showcase if mandelic acid brings anything new or not to the mm -hmm. table. So in the study, both groups show improvement in melasma. However, group two, the group with mandelic acid, showed better results. As a final follow up, 50 percent of the group uh, patients in group two showed a response of greater than 50 percent. Mm. However, in group one only 20% of the patients showed a, uh, the same degree of improvement. Yeah. I find that to be pretty interesting. Yeah, and, and we all know melasma is like incredibly stubborn skin concern to tackle. So I think those are some pretty impressive numbers. Now, reminder, you have to get hydroquinone OTC now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But um, I think it definitely shows that hyperpigmentation will never be a one product or even or one, one ingredient and solution yeah. right so anyways yeah and then again like we mentioned with glycolic acid even something super potent like like this paper doesn't doesn't validate mandelic acid as mm -hmm. a one and done it just validates that exfoliation should be part of your um in your routine and mandelic acid 10 percent is good enough for mm -hmm. bringing that extra layer of efficacy and this doesn't mean if you remove the hydroquinone the mandelic acid yes. will tackle melasma refer back to the first study we just talked about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's hyperpigmentation. Yes. Anti-aging. Good night. <laughs> Mandelic acid anti-aging, I gotta be honest, is not, it's really, really not a realm I would probably suggest yeah. mandelic acid for. Even for glycolic acid, the big dog, we wouldn't really consider it as a true anti-ager unless you're using it as, at, the, at least at big the home levels. peel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big the levels. The theme of today's episode is big. <laughs> Yeah, but we were able to find one study that tried to look at, you know, daily home use mandelic acid in that okay, capacity. Okay. Now we're back to the ground in terms of study <laughs> size. There's 24 people here. Oh, so cute. And they tried a mandelic acid centric routine, which I find to be a little weird. So all mandelic. Yes. Mm. So during the day, they have a 6% mandelic acid serum. Okay. And at night, they have a 4% mandelic acid cream. <laughs> Do not ask me why. <laughs> and they did it for four weeks. Why does this feel like one of those, like, I don't know, groups that are like, we are going to create a line around almond stuff. Yeah, almonds <laughs> yeah. are so in right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And so I should mention for anti-aging studies, four weeks is a pretty short time. Um, and they looked at a relatively narrow parameter. Okay. They have, they use a cutometer, which okay. is a fancy suction cup. And they showed that in just four weeks, in elasticity is improved. I'm channeling my best beauty commercial <laughs> voice right now. <laughs> That's it, Gloria? Just elasticity? In just four <laughs> weeks, elasticity has improved. <laughs> I don't know why, but this really feels like a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if... I, okay, so we'll put the chart up per usual. They did a measurement every week. And one week, two weeks, three weeks. And it seemed like it's trending better right away. Mm. And at four weeks, it's definitively better compared mm -hmm. to the, the initial treatment mm -hmm. i rather have them like not measure every week but just have them keep going with the yeah routine. yeah totally because uh, Gloria's absolutely right especially for any sort of anti-aging benefit four weeks is barely you're, you're barely the surface. Surface. Yes, yeah exactly um just a reminder i think for double play we 
tested ours for 12 weeks. Um, usually you need a, at least eight weeks to get some pretty definitive results. So maybe that's why they only looked at elasticity. They're like, we only got four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we only got four weeks and we only got this tiny device. Time is money, people. <laughs> bzz, go, bzz, go. Peel their faces off every two weeks. This one's like, we only got four weeks. What, what benefit can we get? <laughs> yeah. And then I want to say that is the end of the anti-aging data I can find on oh. mandelic acid. <laughs> And that is why we don't talk about mandelic acid in the anti-aging space. <laughs> yep. Uh, I thought it was like mildly interesting. I think to be able to get a significant reading yeah. of any sort in four weeks sure. is, is interesting. Yes. But again, this doesn't really... Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a tiny, <laughs> tiny trumpet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't see... I'll be honest, to be fair, mandelic acid is in position as an anti-ager super frequently. Mm-hmm. But in case you see that one product that claims it as, you know, skin's next coming, replace your retinol with it, don't take it too seriously. Yeah, now you know. Mm-hmm. Ask them. Go on. <laughs> Did you test for longer than four weeks? Ah, all right, cool. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. I think that's like, that kind of sums up mm. a almost close to everything I found on mandelic acid. No. Um, compared to an, a glycolic or cell acid. The papers I didn't mention are the ones that actually use mandelic very frequently in combination with glycolic. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of head-to-head comparison. So like Victoria mentioned, some of these papers, our takeaway isn't to say mandelic is the superior agent <laughs> yeah. or mandelic should replace your yeah. whatever else, right? It's to say that mandelic does work, does bring efficacy to the table. But we would kind of, I would almost think of this as that like, <laughs> not special. <laughs> <laughs> the AHA that kind of slots in well mm-hmm. with your routine regardless. Mm-hmm. It's a great support cast. It doesn't, um, there's nothing, I will say for me, it especially doesn't show that it should replace your glycolic by mm-hmm. any means. If you're already on glycolic regimen, mandelic at best should be supplemental. Um, if you're on a cell asset, I will actually, and it's more for your acne or congestion, I would say it's actually a fantastic supplement to cell acid, especially because cell acid, you shouldn't find it at higher than 2% for the most part, but mandelic, you can get a range, a percentage that works for you that really bumps the efficacy in that realm. And I was also going to add, like, there are a couple of people out there with acne that maybe don't do as well with cell acid, and this would be our first replacement for that too. And the other thought I had was, like, I do feel like with glycolic, we... Gloria and I generally feel it's a universally good HA molecule. Mandelic and lactic, I think, are the ones that I can see people wanting to figure out, okay, so which one would be for me? Mm -hmm. And I think that one I can see like more split camps. Um, And so this is why we try to share the data on mandelic's profile so you can understand there's like separation there but even between like lactic and mandelic because those two are actually not looked at very well together. Actually, that's such a good point. And as someone with dry skin, I have very... My skin is very acid tolerant, mm. so I often just reach for glycolic mm. uh, and use our gold standard. But if I'm going through some sensitivity mm. or, you know, today I don't want my skin to tingle, yeah. lactic is my go-to, and I truly consider it as, like, like the peel staple mm-hmm. in my routine. Mandelic, we sell these mini sizes of our specialists. <laughs> I don't break out a lot, so I don't need a lot of it. To me, having that is literally, it's a spot treat, right? I use it in a pinch. It supplements whatever peel that I'm using at the time without adding irritation. Yeah. But it does definitely doesn't replace lactic for me. Totally. Totally. So, yeah. Cool. Great. All right. So with that, uh, we are going to wrap this up uh, with talking about just shopping for mandelic acid products. But before that, we got to take a quick break with our animal fun fact of the day. Yay! Just, Gloria, what the heck are we talking about today? <laughs> I'm scarred. <laughs> today, I decided to take a leaf out of Victoria's page. We will not be talking about parasites. We will not be talking about... <laughs> no assholes in the animal kingdom nope. today. And no like ecosystems that's getting completely destroyed. We're yeah. going to go with the cute and fluffy. <laughs> we choose joy today. <laughs> <laughs> today, we're talking about sloth. <laughs> All right. Sloth. I'm listening. So, so, I, while I'm doing my homework, I went on Reddit to like kind of look funny, like animal facts. And I saw this comment where they basically wrote, sloths are so lazy. When they mate, the female just sits in a tree and screams. <laughs> so, Wait, while they're mating? No, no, no. Oh. To signal them, you may come now. <laughs> come so find they're me. like lying there. Just yeah, like- yeah. Ah, oh, okay, good, good. Yeah. And then Mel's like, oh, oh okay, okay, I'm Be uh, right there. <laughs> exactly. 
Right. I and, see. And also, apparently, they are also very eager to just get back on with their lives. <laughs> so the actual mating ritual is insanely short. It was like, mm, done. <laughs> <laughs> so the laziest majors in the animal kingdom this long, really live surprising. up to their name yeah and we we will put for those of you watching on youtube we'll link <laughs> to the screen i'm not exaggerating it's a screen <laughs> they're literally in the tree and you know they look lazy they act they lazy. look lazy they're just like ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. and my favorite is like under that reddit comment everyone said wow I feel like sloths have it better than me. <laughs> so you're saying I could just sit here and be like, come mate with me. <laughs> Go do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Good yep. to know. Yep. So that's it. Fun sloth mating fact. You know, I have to be honest. I have been sharing these fun facts with my familia. Mm -hmm. All familia. Parents, my <laughs> husband, my cousins, <laughs> my in-laws. None of them find them as amusing as I do. I see eyes glaze over at some point. <laughs> I'm like, isn't that cool? And they're like, oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> More concerned <laughs> that I know these things. <laughs> yeah, and I think like um, when we go to aquariums and yeah. like zoos now, yeah. people think you're crazy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I got love sucker. We talked about this. Yes. Like, okay. No, because we went to the Huntington Library. And they have an acacia tree. I was like, oh, 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 do you know about these acacia trees? They're very important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband's like, wow. <laughs> So hopefully you guys can be that person yes. in your friends and family. Doesn't that life. sound great? <laughs> You're like the coolest person in the room. All right. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, all right. Mandelic acid products. Are there any mandelic acid products out there in this world? In the US market, I feel like. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? That's kind of a good point because in the in Asia, yeah. I did a reel a while ago after my trip to Asia, yeah. kind of like what Asian skincare does better and what US skincare does better. And AHA's uh, Asian approach to skincare is pretty gentle, which means sometimes when you're looking for the higher efficacy, it can be hard to find product. But in that sense, mandelic is super popular there because mm. it's a much more gentle, like you're less at risk of irritating your skin with mandelic. That big molecule. <laughs> it's the big egg. <laughs> uh, but generally speaking, you do want to target, AHA is very, very percentage dependent. Mm -hmm. You do want to target a product that has transparent percentages. Yes. And aim for that at least 5% or higher. Yeah. And we have a series that we randomly do <laughs> called Products That Die on You. Yeah. Fill it out if it looks like this. We have shared many a snow globe lookalike. Yes. They are many times mandelic this one. acid This products. is the one. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't know how to formulate this thing. This is the one. Yes. <laughs> um, mandelic acid, it has a very different solubility profile. It has its quirks. Um, it so, takes a lot of chemist love. It does. And it takes time to develop it, which some brands do not apparently take the time to. No, so only paid for X amount of weeks of a chemist work. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out of budget, but stability. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have seen many, many mandelic acid, mm -hmm. especially toners. Yeah. That just kind of went poo poo on us yeah. and not in a not very short amount of time span. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. If you see crystals in your mandelic acid product, it's oh, not going it? to give you the efficacy. It's not worth it. No. But I guess in terms of shopping for mandelic acid, I'll be honest, I think the realm, at least in the U.S., is mm -hmm. more limited. Um, you'll probably find it in more of those like singular ingredient products like the Ordinary, oh, yeah. Inky, things mm -hmm. like that. Our specialist, we're going to wave our little flag. Um, but I think in Asia, like Gloria said, we've definitely noticed a lot more. And I think that brand, Dr. Wu. Dr. Wu has different percentages. They actually provide percentages, which is very rare. Yeah, I think they have a range too. Like you mm -hmm. can buy a 5%, 10%, yeah. um, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's like, yeah, Asian skincare. You can check it out. I've also seen a couple Korean brands. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, just you want to target at least 5% for daily yeah. use. Uh, I will say there's some products out there that feature mandelic and it's positioned as a hyperpigmentation product. Mm. Just take that with a grain of salt. There's nothing wrong with using it, but just know that it shouldn't be just mandelic acid yeah and i think um i would say that just if you're wondering because we did mention like oil and water soluble funkiness um we're still going to recommend using it in the earlier part of your routine unless it's you know used in i guess more of a emulsion base um and don't forget to sunscreen it's still an aj mm -hmm. so yeah yeah so we hope that that's pretty much the mandelic acid episode yeah we hope this answer your questions when we pulled you guys many of you basically just want to know how does it work is there data yes and, and yes does it compare with cell acid yes 
but not so much glycolic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's our episode for the Yay. week. Um, Victoria, what can you find us? <laughs> You can find us at our website at chemistconfessions.com. You can write to us at info at chemistconfessions.com. You can also find us on Instagram at chemist.confessions. This is actually where we will pull you guys for our upcoming episodes and your feedback really shapes these episodes. So mm-hmm. we really value that input. Um, and finally, we are also on TikTok, but don't DM us there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. We hope this episode has been helpful. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.